Hello, my name is Robbie Benve and I'm a mixed media artist. This uh, piece um, uh, behind me is This Must Time at the Ohio Theatre and it's the piece that I have in the Brindle show this year. I like to include in my paintings colorful uh, details and texture. I use acrylic paint and paper for collage. I also like to use my own hand cut stencils. I cut, uh, this is from a just thick paper like cardstock. Um, I cut out shapes with my exacto knife and then I use them as a resist to create squiggles like that. Or you can see this other one on the ground. This pattern here can be recognizable here on the pavement. It's just my way to include some more color and some more fun and texture into my paintings. Every painting I make ends up with many, many layers of different applications on each, any shape, any, any place you can find on the painting. Like here, I had already several layers and it was a bright blue. And then I put this one on, whatever direction it was. And uh, I think it must have been like that. There you go. And I painted this duller, lighter blue. And then when you take it out, some of what was under will still show through where the paper was. And that's the part that I like, those little surprises and the little shapes. See how it changes. I like to start from a very abstract paint underpainting that uh, has some different, some colors, some texture, some uh, lines, some shapes. This is just the first, very first layer of all of that. Often this paint is what is left at the end of a painting session on my palette and I just clean everything, clean the, the palette basically on a canvas that I know I'm going to use for a new painting. We're going to see now a very short demonstration of what I mean by applying paper and applying my stencils. So for the paper, I use things like, um, this is painted uh, tissue paper that, again, I might have done some monoprint on it or I might have just cleaned my brushes on it and let it dry. Sometimes I I tone some music paper with ink and I use that as uh, application and sometimes I use papers from the craft store that are already they, they have a lot of um, details and texture in them like if I have an area with a tree three branches and foliage I could use this one it has a very nice natural an organic element to it or this I've used in for buildings and also for trees but I could use it for anything so let's see to apply I use um, the golden matte gel it's uh, it's just clear acrylic and um, I, I use I have this that is covered with a dry gel but I don't care it's just for the gel application Basically, I have to put on a very a nice thick layer of gel. Let's say I'm going to use this area because it's very, it doesn't have much paint on it. So, and let's do, I, I break it into pieces and I could use the back that has a lighter color, but I like this better. So I'm going to make sure that there is enough under to cover the whole area of the paper and then I kind of push it down so it doesn't make any bubbles there you go and that one is going to dry 
and the clear acrylic is going to make a nice uh, sealing um, it's glue and sealant at the same time so this would be the and I keep going like this without too much planning I'll just go with the flow sometimes I rotate my canvas to have a different point of view and um, and I attach things on different in different areas but I like this one I cut with scissors because it was for a specific um, project that required a, a clean cut but I like to tear them up most of all I actually don't like clean edges because they they show through later I like like more natural rugged edges so this one let's say I put it up there Need a lot of nice thick layer. If it's too too thin, it might just peel off later. All right. Let's put another one. All right. right here. That would be the application of the paper once that is dry i can paint over and some of it might, might just be completely covered and if i have acrylic uh, medium left on my on my knife i just clean it up because it's um it's acrylic paint without any pigment basically and it creates some texture and some coverage for the canvas no matter what now let's look at the how i apply the stencils um so I have a lot of different stencil um, shapes that I have cut out. This one is a brand new one. I have not even used it once. I drew it on paper and I cut it out with my X-Acto knife. And when I use it, it's going to make this kind of foliage almost uh, shape uh, wherever I decide. So I'm going to use some of the paint that I have in my palette. Let's see. I'm going to use a stencil um, kind of brush that is flat at the, at, the, at the point and the cut red light which is already present that's more like a, a true red so I'm going to mix the cut red light with some quinacrylate or magenta to make it more like a true red so it, it matches the red that is already there and make some foliage right here Actually, once the when the paint runs out on the brush, it it gets even better because then you can see some of what is still there from you know you can still see some of the initial layers. I don't like that. Let's see what happens when I take it off. See that might become a part of something in the painting or it might just be almost all covered whatever happens it's going to have some information for the final painting you're going to see a little bit of the shape and a little bit of the colors and it's going to be that's what i like about these things let's use another one like the squiggle um i have this nice little squiggle one that I like this one this one is uh for some reason I really like this one I I drew freehand all the squiggles in the back and then I cut around the negative space and what I'm left is this kind of a circular fun shape so I'm going to do that here and I can overlap a little bit of the foliage, I, does, I don't care, it doesn't have to be, none of this is final in my technique, there is no mistake 
everything works. And I kind of shift slightly the color from one. When I recharge, I, I may add a little bit more blue or a little bit more red to the brush. There you go. There you go. Look at that. So I will do something like this in different areas. Maybe some might be smaller. And some might be bigger. Might be, I might change the color a little bit. And so it, it kind of ties in with whichever area you might remains in the inside visible till the end. It kind of comes all together. And of course, I can cover this as well. I can cover the, the music paper. What that does is that it leaves some of the music paper visible and some of the pattern. Here is a view a little bit more up close. Because up to this point, usually I have no idea what I'm going to paint. I just prepare some canvases like this, ready to go for when I need one for the painting. Once I decide what to paint, I will draw the basics of the composition and apply more um, texture or paper or layers or uh, stencils where they are in sync with the design of the painting that I'm going to create.